Okay, so I thought I would add um, another video to my little tube bending tricks and show my setup that I use. Um, so basically this is about a 20 to 25 year old JD squared model three bender. Um, for years and years and years, I used it mounted on a pedestal with the uh, manual ratchet style setup. Um, and I basically got tired of it um, when you use it that way, if you're not familiar, it lays down and swings horizontally. And if you don't have a large shop, uh, this tube, as it gets bent, can swing and you gotta have space. And I don't, so um, I built this setup that holds it, you know, basically 90 degrees from how it used to be. And now the tube swings up which can still get you in trouble, but now this does not have to be mounted to the floor. So worst case scenario is I can roll it outside. Um, you can see it's just kind of got a pretty basic little frame. Um, I drew up all these parts and had, a, had them plasma cut out on a CNC table. So basically what it uses is a Harbor Freight engine hoist jack. Um, this is an air powered one. Um, I'm just running it with the jack handle right now because I don't have my air compressor running at the moment. It's kind of a cool feature I haven't seen other people do when they build these style stands is I put this slot here, um, this two by three tubing that holds the jack does not have slotted holes. So it's basically indexed with the bender itself. So if you loosen these two bolts, you can level this tube so you put it in the bender, get a little bit of tension on it so it's tight, and then, you know, basically level it out with this. It just kind of helps a little bit with the, uh, keeping your mind wrapped around the angles. Um, so I keep two of these little uh, digital angle cubes on, on the bender at all times. And so what I do is when I get a little tension on the tube and everything's seated in the dies nice, just zero uh, slightest movement they don't zero zero out this guy and then before I start the bend I'll stick this right here and, you know and it'll read zero and then as you're as you're uh, running the bender up obviously that's going to show your angle and then to double check spring back that's where I use the second one I keep this guy on here um, and I'll hit the hold button to keep track of where I went. So if I have to add more, I know how much more to add basically. Um, so I'll run the bend up to, I usually go about a degree and a half, usually it's pretty close um, on about 45 degrees. So then I'll release the jack, let the pressure off, let the spring back happen. And then I'll put the second one on here, zero it off of here read it off this guy and see where I'm at. And if I'm, you know, a little short, a couple degrees short or whatever, this guy has kept track of where I was. So then I hit the hold button to take the hold off and um, add the degrees that are needed. Works out pretty good. Um, take your time. Usually get bends right on the money within, you know, a couple tenths of a degree, which is in most cases good enough, but if you're real careful, you can get them right on the money. It's a pretty cool setup. I'm pretty happy um, with it. And usually, one of, one of the things that makes this a lot easier is if, if you're bending multiple bins that are in the same plane, it's a lot easier to get the second bin set up and balance it straight up and down versus horizontal as the bender was in the manual position because then you're constantly having to have adjustable stands and move the stands as the bend starts. And it's just a real pain. This makes it a lot easier. And another nice thing is like, I'm doing this handrail job and if I need to do a little fine tuning on the job site, I can throw this in the bed of the truck and take it with me. And it doesn't require any power or anything. Makes it super easy. And again, there's the Harbor Freight pump or a uh, hydraulic jack that everybody uses. They're pretty handy, super reliable, cheap, pretty hard to beat. And with the uh, 
air motor on it. it makes it pretty fast. Um, one thing I have found is it is a little easy to overshoot your angles because the thing runs, uh, it vibrates a lot when it's running because it's like a, a piston pump. And so you've got to be real careful because these, if when you jiggle them, the angles go all over the place. That's something you got, something you got to pay attention to. Run a little bit, stop, let it settle. I usually keep my hand on it to help kind of damp the vibrations. But definitely the way to go, in my opinion. Um, if you're in the market for tubing benders, it looks like this bender is no longer sold. The Model Three, they have like a Model Thirty Two, I believe it's called. Um, which is very similar. Um, it's got a higher capacity. This bender, you can only get up to a two inch die. And I believe the model 32 is a two and a half. Um, I don't have need for tubing that big. Inch and three quarter is what I'm using 99% of the time. So, but shoot, this bender is, I think I bought this bender in 1996 or 97. It's made thousands and thousands of bends and None of these holes are worn out. I mean, because it's just hitch pins and, and holes. There's no bushings. There's no brass. It's held up great. I don't honestly don't maintain it very well. It's usually full of grinding dust and it's held up great. Like definitely worth the money. It looks like still today for about a thousand dollars, you can get um, the basic frame of a vendor in one die. Um, and Pro Tools, Woodward Fab, uh, there's several different basically copies of the same style and they all work basically the same. The only thing is I know for sure JD Squared and Pro Tools dies are not interchangeable. Um, this whole spacing is a little different. Um, I have used them. Usually you just got to run a smaller pin. Um, but still be mindful of that whatever brand you you pick, you kind of got to stick with on the dies. Um, the only major issue I've had is this is a really old die and this is just a solid steel block. And so basically the tubing gets drawn through this die and I've used a drum sander or a little flap sander on this about five million times <laughs> cleaning it up um fortunately with jd squared the new dies they've uh, improved that design this is a newer style die that they make um this is just a little one incher but they use these replaceable i don't know what you call those bearing blocks and I don't know what that material is, but it works really good. It doesn't leave scratches on the tubing at all. Um, I haven't used this one a ton, so I don't know how long they last, but it works way better. That's one something on my list is getting hold of JD Squared and ordering a new follower die for this guy because it's been sharp, or, uh, polished so many times. I think the geometry is a little off now. But even at that, I mean, these are just basically getting to where it needs to be shined up again. About every five to 10 bends, I gotta polish it up. Um, I've been using 90 weight gear oil lately. That seems to work about the best so far. I used to use WD-40, that's kind of a joke. Um, yeah, the gear oil works pretty well. Kind of stinky and a mess, but just part of the, just part of uh, part of the job, I guess. So anyway, if you guys got any questions, I'm happy to share. Um, I know it's kind of expensive thing to get into, but if you want to build bumpers and roll cages and you know any kind of cool stuff that's tubing, it's just one of the tools it takes. Um, don't waste your time with a Harbor Freight pipe bender. They're garbage. Some people, there's, there's videos of some people modifying them to make them to work, but the amount of hours you got to put into it, you might as well just save your money and buy a good one from the start. Plus with those benders, they push from the center of the bend. It's a whole lot harder to calculate where to start the bends at. 
these guys, once you get the hang of uh, kind of plotting out the bins, like I showed in the first video, it, you can get the bins right on the money every time. Super easy. Um, as far as notching goes, I actually ran for several years with a cheap Harbor Freight whole saw style launcher, and it actually worked pretty good for a while. Um, now I've got a Pro Tools bender, I mean, uh, notcher. This thing's pretty awesome. It's actually got bearings. It's a lot more rigid. Um, pretty decent notcher. Um, for a lot of crazy, really steep notchers, I have this old junky bandsaw I got. The, the vise was blown, all blown out, so I bought it, made a stand, and just set it up as a horizontal or a vertical bandsaw so I can cut the real steep angles on this guy. And between this and a grinder with a flap wheel, you can do some pretty amazing notches. In reality, if you're just getting started, you can do a lot of notching just with a grinder. Like once you get the, once you get the hang of it, I mean, most, that's a straight cut with a cutoff wheel, this and this. And then you just get in with the flap wheel and just clean it up a little bit. You can do a lot. Um, built this a while ago, so I don't really remember, but I know a lot of these weird notches like up in here, which is hard to see. These notches are in a bend, so you can't get them in that style notcher. And so the, those bends were all done with a grinder. Unfortunately, it's so buried, I really can't show, but those had pretty good fit-ups. It's one thing I, I'm not the world's greatest welder, but I pride myself on my fit-ups, give myself the best chance possible. Yeah, when you get into multiple tube junctions, that's where your notcher really becomes your friend. Anyway, that's just, that's the stuff I use. Yeah, between this, this guy, this old dinosaur Miller, and a handful of Harbor, or uh, DeWalt grinders I have. That, uh, I don't know, $2,000 investment has made me, who knows how much money. Thanks a lot for watching. Got any questions? Let me know. Thanks.